Our pharmacology topic today is muscle relaxants. Muscle relaxants decrease muscle tone. They are used to treat symptoms associated with increased muscle tone, such as muscle spasms, hyperreflexia, and pain. Technically, the term muscle relaxants can be subdivided into two major groups, including neuromuscular blockers and spasmolytics. Neuromuscular blockers work in the periphery. Neuromuscular blockers block nicotinic 1 receptors in the neuromuscular junction to stop skeletal muscle contractions. They are useful during certain types of surgery and for procedures such as intubation to cause short-term flaccid paralysis. Most spasmolytics work centrally at the level of the spinal cord or brain. The term muscle relaxants is most often used to refer just to spasmolytics, and these are the topic of this video. Remember that an indication is the reason the drug is used. As mentioned, muscle relaxants are often indicated for the treatment of painful musculoskeletal conditions. Some examples include treating muscle spasms associated with overexertion and helping manage the spasticity of severe chronic disorders like multiple sclerosis and cerebral palsy. These drugs usually work best when used alongside physical therapy. To understand the mechanisms for the muscle relaxers, diazepam, tizanidine, and baclofen, let's review a cross-section of the spinal cord and zoom in on the motor neuron synapses. For voluntary muscle contraction of limbs, the upper motor neuron, or UMN, is activated in the cerebral cortex and action potentials travel down the spinal cord where they synapse with lower motor neurons or LMNs at the level of exit. Inhibitory interneurons regulate the excitation of the LMNs. An action potential traveling down the upper motor neuron will cause the release of excitatory neurotransmitters like norepinephrine or glutamate onto the LMN which will then activate the skeletal muscle. The inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA is released from the inhibitory neuron and acts to decrease the excitation of the LMN by increasing chloride permeability in the LMN. Diazepam, a benzodiazepine used for muscle spasms, will bind to the BZD binding site of GABA-A receptors located on cell bodies of the lower motor neurons to increase the permeability of chloride even more. Thus the action of diazepam augments or increases the action of GABA and hyperpolarizes the cell even more. The hyperpolarization decreases the frequency of action potentials traveling through the LMN to the muscle. Baclofen is a drug used for spasms associated with spinal cord injuries. Baclofen activates GABA-B receptors in the postsynaptic membrane to cause an increase in potassium conductance in the LMN, which also causes hyperpolarization. There are also GABA-B receptors in the presynaptic membrane of the upper motor neuron. Activation of these receptors leads to less release of calcium ions and consequently less release of excitatory neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and glutamate from the UMN onto the LMN. Consequently, less action potentials travel down the LMN to reach the muscle. Tizanidine is one of the drugs used for spasms associated with multiple sclerosis. This drug is an alpha-2 agonist and binds to UMN axon terminals and causes less release of excitatory neurotransmitter. Another muscle relaxer, dantrolene, is a direct-acting muscle relaxant that blocks rhyonidine receptors in skeletal muscles. Therefore, unlike the other muscle relaxants, it doesn't act in the CNS. Dantrolene is indicated for the treatment of muscle spasms associated with multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, spinal cord injuries, and malignant hyperthermia, or MH. MH is a severe reaction characterized by fever, muscle rigidity, tachycardia. Although rare, MH occurs in susceptible individuals that are exposed to volatile general anesthetics, like halothane, and depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, like succinylcholine. 
Dantrolene binds to the rhinodyne channel and prevents it from opening when the action potential reaches the DHPR. This prevents release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and prevents muscle contraction. Dantrolene is more selective for skeletal muscle because the heart has rhinodyne type 2 receptors instead of type 1 that is in skeletal muscle. Several muscle relaxers are used for local muscle spasms associated with overexertion or injuries. Manual laborers, or those in car accidents, are examples of individuals who may have these drugs prescribed by a physician. Common muscle relaxers that fit this category are carisoprodol, cyclobenzaprine, metaxalone, chlorzoxazone, and orphenadrine. The mechanism for these drugs is not well understood, but is believed that they are to act in the brainstem. Muscle relaxers that act in the CNS have the following adverse effects in common. Euphoria, lightheadedness or dizziness, fatigue, and muscle weakness. Due to these effects, it is important to advise patients and monitor them while taking these medications. Also, since most muscle relaxers are CNS depressants, don't mix with alcohol and use caution when driving and operating machinery. Here is a summary of the mechanisms of action for muscle relaxers. Pause the video now for review. Here now is a practice problem to test your knowledge. Pause the video and think of your answer. If you answered H, then you are correct. Thanks for watching.